Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Diego Rodriguez, architect at IROM. My colleague here is Gonzalo Carro, partner architect and responsible for the design of Salvador Civic Centre. It is in Vitoria Gasteiz. Vitoria is a small city. It is the capital of the Basque Country in the north of Spain. It is. Uh, uh, it has 240,000 inhabitants. Currently, it has 13 civic centres, public civic centres serving main neighbourhoods. There was a public competition organised for Salburua neighbourhood. Well, Salburua neighbourhood. Currently has 13,000 inhabitants, it's de designed to reach up to 30,000, so it will be quite a dense neighborhood. The plot is located near um, a green uh, a main park uh, and just in front of a main green corridor. And here we can see how is the, the actual uh, urban plan and how it will be in the future. But we all, always ask ourselves, what is a civic center? We said that a civic center is a place where it happens a lot of uh, different activities, all uh, by, uh, under the same roof. But if there is a special identity design of the Vitoria Civic Center, is that they are the place where the neighbors meet every day. So in a metaphorical way, we could say that they are like uh, meeting points. Uh, we're going to try to explain the, 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 the building through seven design keys. The key number one is the density. When we compare the program with the size of the plot and the maximum height allowed by the uh, urban regulations, we conclude that we, have to, we were forced to design a very compact building. The key number two is the uh, volumetric design approach. Um, the building uh, is surrounded by taller buildings uh, with a um, human scale because they are housing. Also, towers in a second lane, in a second plane. So, we decide to um, design the building as a single sculpture piece um, without a particular scale, uh, his own scale, and with no distinction between the facades and the roof. And this reinforced the, the idea of the piece supported by big fits. The entrance is another important thing because uh, due to a uh, client's uh, previous experience, the client wanted just one only public entrance for all the building despite the size of the building. So um, the building is surrounded by three narrow um, walk side and full of parking lots. Uh, nevertheless, the, there is a main green corridor. So that's why we decided to locate the building entrance facing to this uh, green corridor and taking advantage of the part of the, of the plot where the uh, slope was less steep. We take the, this opportunity to create a new covered public space as an extension of the main lobby of the building. Another design key was a see-through ground floor. As we said before, the client wanted only one uh, public access, uh, although uh, users will come from all around. So that's why we designed a very see-through ground floor that allows to see the activity of the center from the outside and invites to the citizen to come into it. Um, such a transparent facade enables uh, great visuals uh, from the outside, inside, and also allows to see what happened in the other work side. Uh, the visual connections are also so important. Um, as we said before, uh, this um, visual connection outside, inside, we took this strategy also inside, and we generate visual links between different parts of the program, both horizontally and vertically. Um, despite its uh, massive exterior appearance, um, 
we designed the building as a pierced sculpted volume, and above all, there are two crucial elements that um, reinforce the idea of this visual richness, and they are the main atriums. <coughs> the main atriums have a um, key special role as a vertical communication course, and also they are very important to light up the building. On the one hand, we have the first main atrium that uh, give access to the sport area in the basement and also leads to the um, social and cultural area on the first floor. And on the other hand, we have the second main atrium that leads to the swimming pool in a kind of second floor. And the last design key was the budget. Or better call, the no budget. A very, very limited budget. So that's why we decided to use an extensive, uh, make an extensive use of industrial solutions everywhere. And this allowed us to save enough money to, for example, design a powerful structure or use glass partition in many places and other decisions in this way. For example, here we can see as we use a metallic industrial system for the facade, or how we design interior spaces just with painted concrete masonry walls, or unexposed structure, or unexposed facilities, but very well organized. And this way, and according to the client needs, we were able to build the, the, this center with just 650 euros per square meter which is a really, really low budget, even for Spain. And we will want to talk a few comments about the program. As we said before, the sport area is located on the basement. Well, here we can see the, the different sport area uh, with the change room in, uh, between them, and the main atriums, and another skywalk. Uh, it's, this is important. Um, we buried the sport area because they need high walls all around. So that way we obtain that see-through ground floor that we were looking for. The public area is located uh, on, the ground, on the ground floor. And we would like to highlight only two things. The first thing is that despite the size of the plot of the ground floor, we managed to organize all the access to different parts of the program in just 15 meters from the entrance. So this was great for the client, and right now this is really great for, for the users. And the other thing that it's important for us is the place where we locate the community meeting space, in the center of the building, in the heart of the building, surrounded by the main atriums, and lightened up by a round, big uh, skylight as a metaphor of these concepts. The cultural and social area is located uh, on the first floor, and it's divided in three parts. And the family library also lightened up by the round skylight, and the main cantilever library that it seems to flow over the building entrance. The um, workshops and also the, um, the office area. <laughs> and finally, the swimming pool, configured as a piece that uh, cross the building from one facade to the other. And where we divide the changing rooms into parts to generate a viewpoint over the swimming pool when you get there and the piece that crosses all the, the building. <laughs> and we would like to finish with this slide. Uh, it's a small tribute to the artist Edward Hopper. So thank you very much for your attention, and it's been a pleasure for us to be here.